Hi, Roy. Welcome back. Thanks, Jim. Glad to be back. Um, I was just uh, at the uh, T-Mobile announcement on Monday uh, where they announced that they were America's best network. And I know a lot of the carriers, you know, announced that and then there's this leapfrogging each other. But I think in this particular case, there's like a 500 million data points backing this one by Ookla. They are right now officially America's best network with real world applications, real world experiences. So this is not a drive test. This is actually real users using real applications on a real network itself. So I think they said that by now with that many data points, they felt comfortable basically taking the mantle from the other two major carriers in the US and saying that they're in fact number one and they believe they're quite secure in the number okay. one. Yeah. So that's that's the okay. big one. So yeah, more performance always good, but tell us about the satellite aspect, the star. Yeah. Actually, yeah, what was actually more more interesting to me was actually the T satellite announcements. Now we've heard about that previously, but now it's gonna be commercially available July twenty third for everyone and it'll allow SMS texting, you know, MMS, picture messaging, and even short audio clips. So that's happening. And then in October, which I'm looking forward to, they say that they will actually provide data service to select applications on that satellite network as well. And so as long as you're in the continental United States, I guess you have uh, access and you're outdoors and you can see satellites, one of the 600 plus Starlink satellites that are actually out there and supporting this service, that you in fact can get um, coverage, X coverage and even if in fact, data coverage after that. And so that I, th I thought that's pretty cool. The other element is um, they are actually offering it to non-T-Mobile subscribers. So for 10 bucks a month, if you are on AT&T or Verizon, you can actually get access to T-Satellite for messaging. If you're one of those areas of 500,000 square miles that are covered by these uh, satellites that you can actually use the T-Mobile service. And finally, one thing that I thought was actually quite cool is um, they're going to allow 911 text messaging for anyone. You don't have to be on a, a T-Mobile network. You can actually use it in, in an emergency as well. I think that's a nice public service that they're adding to that. So yeah, for me, that was actually a lot more exciting. And of course, there was this Dash Pass thing by DoorDash that was bundled in, which is kind of cool. I mean, it's value add to T-Mobile subscribers. But for me, yeah. I think the satellite one was the, the coolest part of the announcements. Yeah, the new capabilities for T-Mobile, that, that's great. But, you know, I think if we step back and, and uh, look at how Starlink is evolving, the number of satellites that they have, it's in the thousands now, and it's increasing, seems like 60 new satellites every week. Maybe it's more than that. And they are quietly becoming not just a broadband rural provider, but now all these other capabilities. And you might say, sure, that's great for people like you who like to go hiking, but quite possibly they start embedding themselves into every major mobile operator in the world. And then they start carrying all these text messages and picture messages from outdoors. And then they move into robotics or self-driving cars or all of these other areas that make them, uh, before you know it, one of the biggest telecom operators on the planet. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I think, you know, as a communications company, I mean, Starlink is, is pretty impressive. I think they have now over 6 million subscribers across like 140 countries and, and it's seen remarkable growth because that growth was from like 4 million just in September last year. So that's Mm. quite impressive right and so you are right i think with with you know that many satellites in orbit it's it's going to be interesting to see how you know it's not just data communications but also now potentially voice communications and and yeah it'd be interesting to see what happens they're partnering with different carriers right around the world and maybe they partner and run an mvno service across the world and so now you know they become a large communications not just data only, but they could also right. provide cell service. It'll be interesting to see what happens. And certainly, you know, and know Project Kuiper from Amazon is, is is trying to get up there as well, but they have a very limited number of satellites uh, to date. And so I think there are 27 that went up in April, right? And, this, and then there's right. another batch of 27. And so there's 50 plus satellites in orbit and they'll get there, right, eventually. But certainly satellite non-terrestrial networks is... Definitely the place to watch uh, for the That's right. That's right. And there are a couple, a handful of other players in, in the space, AST yeah. being one of them. And then uh, China right. has a, a venture, maybe two. That's right. And, and there's uh, one of web, course, right. the European Union also yep. is, is pushing for their own version. But certainly, got to keep watching this space. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thank you.